Hey folks, welcome back to JW's Garage and part number four of converting my C5 Coupe into a C5 Z06 Targa. And additionally, I'm painting the body, which is what a lot of you have probably tuned in for. I'm at the point where I need to start getting some of the prep done on this left side and right side quarter panel so that when the roof goes on, these have all been jammed. We'll get into what jamming is um, in just a little bit here. I'm, I'm particularly a big fan of hand sanding pads myself, especially when doing a Corvette because they have so many round edges that I don't want to put a air sander, power sander, something with a hard flat disc against a lot of areas that are curved because it creates flat spots. For some people, especially if you're not experienced in sanding, you can really mess a car up. You pick these up on Amazon, they're Velcro. I'm using a Hook It 2 sandpaper in 320 grit to get started. perfect timing for the air compressor to turn on but when you start hand sanding you're still using a block but you can start to see all the high spots and the low spots that are probably going to need some attention hey one thing I do want to show you that when you're sanding if you follow my finger and you look right across this back edge you'll see that it's got a much wider finish all the way down and then just a quarter inch to the inside you can see some areas that uh, are still shiny the shiny areas mean that that paint has not been hit by the sandpaper and let me explain why that's there when you paint something the edges can be subject to what we call pooling so what happens is, is when you've gone through you've sprayed all your clear coat and got it on there as a clear coat starts to settle, it starts to spread out, what will happen is it will pull up right on that edge and it'll just be microscopic, but you'll see that when you sand it, it'll pop right up. So you got to make sure that when you are prepping something like this, that you are sanding that edge down and getting this finish nice and even all the way across because if you go back to repaint this and the clear does it again it's going to end up magnifying that problem so just be aware of that pooling that if you want a really nice flat paint job probably the best thing to do is come back with a sanding block personally i like using paint sticks myself i'll take a couple of paint sticks i'll cut them into about two three inch strips tape them together wrap my sandpaper around it and I'll very detailed go around all of these edges and I'll do that all right picking up where we left off yesterday I mentioned jamming and I want to cover that a little more what's going to happen is I'm going to take this fender off and I'm going to prep all of this on the inside here and down here where it goes into the door jam, which is where I think the term comes from. And all this is gonna get painted black and clear coated. And then the fender's gonna go back on, the roof's gonna go on for its last time permanently. This is gonna be all jammed. And the purpose of that is, is so it's painted all down inside the edges and you don't have areas in which you're gonna have peeling take place. And then number two, it's just the professional way to do it. All right, the next part that we're gonna go over, yesterday when I was filming, I mentioned pooling right here along the edge where the outside turns a lot whiter and then you can see right there those shiny spots and what that means is that that paint's not been, been sanded at all. I also mentioned I like to use paint sticks. Another thing you can go with is a Durablock. I'll put a link to these down below where you can find them on Amazon. They sell a pretty good size kit of these and, uh, and I'll use that so that I'll have a, 
nice flat surface right there. Wrap my sandpaper around it. Just gonna hold it with my fingers. Cutting down. And you wanna make sure that you're using the same grit sandpaper, I'm using 320, as what you prep the whole fender in. Different grits of sandpaper re remove different amounts of material. So to keep this all the same, make sure you're always using the same grit sandpaper. The reason I don't like pulling is, is when you go to put two panels together, like the rear bumper and the fender, you get this goofy looking edge. Another thing I like to keep around when I'm sanding is a brand new microfiber. Do not grab a microfiber that you've been wiping your car with, it's brand new out of a package, but they're great dusting towels for when you do body work. And you see if I wipe that off, you can still see the shiny spot right there. Don't wanna use a lot of pressure, just let the sandpaper do its job. And unfortunately, that means more work for you. This is a high spot. And what's happening is, is for some reason, there's a spot in that panel that sits higher than what the rest of the panel is. And what's happening is the paint is completely sanding away from that area. And I'm and that is starting to be the primer coming through. Little spots like that. Typically you can continue to sand those and it's, and it's a term called feather edging but you'll see that you, you got the primer here and then it seems like you got a ring around it turns into the rest of the surrounding color. That's feather edged out. Can't feel it at all. So you're not gonna have to do anything there. It's perfect, you're blocking. Got that right out of there. Now we go about fixing those plastic spreaders. Make sure that the edge isn't all chewed up. The edge is all chewed up. Your product's not going to go on smooth. Just make the job that much tougher. So how you put this on here is right out of the tube. And this is a product made by USC. Anyways, and it's a product called Pronto. And this is just a filler putty. Now this is only to do small scrapes and chips and drape it across. But again, this is only for those little, small damaged areas. See where it's filling in those scratches? These fenders will go back on, then I'll be bonding the roof. And once the roof is bonded, that's when we do the fiberglass work and join this whole puzzle together. So, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Greatly appreciate that. Smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And we will get part five out next week.